Do you know what this is? Of, of course you don't know what this is. Unless you read the title. Then never mind. This is my brand new Canon Rebel SL2. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Ah, I bought a bundle, so there's actually a couple extra accessories in there. Oh, oh man, this just feels so nice. Oh, the, the size of it is perfect. All right, so I just bought the body only. I didn't go for the kit lens and I bought a couple other lenses separately that I thought would work better for me and my purposes. So because of the kind of videos that I make and what I'm gonna be doing with the camera, instead of the kit lens, I decided to get these two lenses. One is the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter lens and one is the 50 millimeter prime lens. Oh yes. pretty this is. So this 10 to 18 millimeter lens is what I'm going to use for a lot of video. It can get a lot wider than the kit lens can. And that's why I went with this one. Oh man, this is, mm, that's nice. Great size actually. I, that's, that's awesome. Let's turn it on. Oh man, this looks great. And one reason why this camera is going to be so exciting to use for these videos, flip out screen. Oh yeah, oh that's awesome. Face tracking. This has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is just, oh, really good. I'm so excited to start using this. One of the extras that came in the bundle was this SD card. You know what, actually, uh, let's switch. All right, oh, ooh. This is now footage that you are watching on my brand new Canon Rebel SL2. Everything is on completely out of the box auto settings. I'm going to get into the menu and mess with the settings a little bit in a minute, but I wanted you to see just exactly what it looked like right out of the box without me touching anything. So I can see right here that the autofocus is picking up my face really well. It actually has a little box that's kind of floating around on my face to make sure that I'm in focus. That's awesome. Also, I can actually look and see what's in my shot. That's a first for me. That's as far as focal length right now. I have the lens at 16. I'm gonna actually go ahead and move this to an 18 millimeter focal length just so you guys can see what it would look like with the widest shot if you do get the kit lens. So this is 18 millimeter. This is about what your widest shot would be with the kit lens if you were to get the kit lens. Again, I didn't, but the kit lens is 18 to 55. So this is about what your widest shot would be with that. I have the camera probably about six feet away from me. You can still get a reasonably wide shot at 18. The second lens I got is this 50 millimeter prime lens. This is also known as the nifty 50. Prime lens means that you have one focal length. It doesn't zoom in or out. It also has a 1.8 f-stop. This is gonna be great for getting that kind of blurry background that looks so cool. This lens is really small. The size of the entire camera setup with this lens on it is going to be just really portable. It's gonna be really cool. All right, so you've seen a little bit of what this looks like here inside on a tripod locked off. This camera does not come with in-body image stabilization, but this 10 to 18 lens does have image stabilization in it. So Let's take it for a spin. So we're taking the dog to the dog park today. Just wanted to show you guys what this looks like out and about. So I'm not hand holding this. There's a little bit of distance from my face right now. I definitely like how wide the shot is. Let's go. Pop. doing really well so far. I definitely like how it's performing. One thing I do notice is it's kind of slow to make changes uh, when I'm going from shade to light. You can probably tell as I'm walking in between the light here. Yeah, so it, it takes a second. Again, it's f on full auto right now. I just wanted you guys to see how it looked completely in full auto. This is how it's performing straight out of the box. So as far as frames per second goes, this can do up to 60 which means if you're exporting your video at 30 frames per second, 
can slow it down to 50%, so half the normal speed. So as far as my first reactions with this camera, my first first reaction is, I love this camera. The autofocus was crazy accurate. It shows what it's focusing on with a little box in the display. It's super lightweight, so it's easy to carry around. You're not gonna get tired taking a bunch of shots with it, even if you're holding it out on kind of a selfie mode. It has some really cool features, one of which is kind of a guide. In the menu, it walks you through what all the different settings are gonna do, how they'll change the look of the image or the video. One thing I was worried about is that the mic cable was going to cut me off from being able to see the screen, and it actually doesn't at all. I'll actually show you guys what I'm talking about here. So you can see here, this is the mic cable, and it connects right here. And I thought that it would cut off the screen, but the screen actually doesn't start until after where the mic cable would come out. So that actually doesn't affect it at all. Also, look at how pretty this thing is. Oh man. As far as the size of this camera goes, it's really small. I don't personally think that it's too small or that it feels cramped or anything, but if you have really large hands, maybe that would be a problem. I don't think it's a problem at all. So I've only used the auto settings on this so far just so you guys could see what that looks like and it's ridiculously good. Just everything straight out of the box. I haven't changed anything. I mean, you can tell how good it looks. One thing to keep in mind, this does not have in-body image stabilization in the camera. The wide-angle lens, the 10 to 18 that I have that I'm using now, does have optical image stabilization in the lens. So it will cut that out a little bit. But if you want that really crisp still image, you're definitely gonna need a gimbal or a steady cam or something with this. Now this camera really doesn't do 4K and some people really want 4K in their camera. I don't feel that it's necessary. Nobody is watching YouTube videos in full 4K on a full 4K capable screen right now. Almost everybody is watching it on their phone screen. Some people even have it on their auto settings that puts it to 720p, which just grosses me out. So for 4K, yes, it's gonna look better, but for the money, the time, and the effort that you put into it for very few people to actually truly be able to utilize it, I don't think it's worth it right now. Two years from now, we might be having a different discussion, but for right now, I think 1080p is right for most people making YouTube videos. If you're looking for a camera solely for photography and not for videography, there might be other options that you would wanna look into. For photos, this camera can do five frames per second, so if you're doing sports photography or wildlife photography, that's a little bit slow. Another feature that I thought was really awesome that I have seen a couple people talk about, but not a whole lot of people have talked about very in depth, is the Camera Connect app that you can use with this. And look at this. Yeah, you're seeing me, you're seeing my phone, seeing what the camera sees of my phone. That's like, that's like camera inception. I can, from my phone, remotely control the camera to take video, to take pictures. I can select what to focus on. Watch this. Let's focus on maybe something over here. And I go out of focus a little bit, back to my face, and I'm back in focus. This is crazy. It's a little slow. If you're trying to film something live, I wouldn't suggest using the app to pull your focus. But if you want to set something, you're not right next to the camera, but you still want to select focus and you have time for the phone to send the info to the camera for a few seconds, then it's really cool. But for this video quality, the size, having the flip out screen, that's a, that's a complete game changer for me. Like I can just look over here and know whether I'm in frame or not. Before I was using my, my iPhone camera and it was just like, oh, I hope I'm in frame kind of thing. This is so convenient, so easy. Having all of that with this awesome video quality in such a compact camera size, being able to use the entire range of Canon lenses with this camera, the auto settings, the autofocus and everything, just being able to pull this out of the box, 
start taking video and know that it's going to look good, I don't think that there's a better option out there for a starter vlogging camera right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you were thinking about getting this camera, if you're thinking about getting a camera to start making YouTube videos, I definitely suggest the Canon Rebel SL2. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button.